Mark Ray Mundy for MMAfighting.com here at Bellator 206 Media Day with Aaron Pico, who fights on, on Saturday's card at, uh, at the SAP Center here in San Jose. Aaron, uh, you're wearing a suit, which is something that you seem to always be doing at these media days, and you know other guys are kind of wearing, wearing board shorts and wearing you know the, maybe their sponsored t-shirts. Why always a suit for you at these? Well, this is important to me. This is being in front of a camera. It, it, it's professional, you know. I like wearing a suit, and plus, it makes me feel good. I feel like I, I can do a better interview when I, when I wear a suit. And yeah, overall, I, I have my sponsors and stuff. But when it's media and, and, and being on camera, anytime I get to wear a suit, I, I always do. So, media that you wear a suit, press conferences, and then fight night. Do you, do you still wear a suit? And you come in like after for press conferences with a suit as well? Yeah, I, I go to the venue with the suit. And then after I do my press conference in the suit, and then uh, usually when I after I go see my family, go out to dinner and stuff, go back and change, and then put on some some regular clothes. So yeah, that's usually my routine. Is it the thought of, of kind of being being a professional athlete? That's that's kind of how you want to portray yourself. Yeah, absolutely. This is uh, it's my job. This is something I take very very serious. I just yeah, I don't I don't you know like people who have you know. You usually go to work, have nice suits on, and then and, and they take you know they just can't show up in regular clothes and jeans, and that's the way I feel about my job. I take it very serious and professional about it, and yeah, that's that's this is why I dress like this on media days and on on, on big occasions because it's, it's it's big to me. Your fight Saturday is against uh, Leandro Higo, who is a very tough competitor. He's 18 and four. He has way more experience than you. Is it the, t the toughest fights so far for you in uh, in your pro career? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, he's definitely. All my opponents have had uh, more experience than me. But uh, yeah, 18 and four. He's fought for a world title before. But nothing changes. Training camp went well. I have the best coaches surrounding me, the best team, and I'm gonna come out victorious on Saturday night. Someone who who has uh, your record and your and your relative lack of you know experience as far as MMA goes may get fighters who are. You know, two and zero or zero and zero or one and zero. He's eighteen and four. Like you said, he's fought for a world title. He's 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 a top he's a top one thirty five or this fight's at one forty five. Why? Why take this fight? Well, I I've, I've made it very very clear that I want to be a world champion. And, and and anytime you you step up the competition, it raises the bar for yourself. It, it makes you more that much more hungry to go train, and to, to take stuff serious. Fighting guys just that I'm gonna kick the shit out of I don't feel good as a person I don't feel good going to practice saying oh it's guys like this two and one I'm gonna it doesn't feel good to me but when I wake up I'm finding a guy that's fought for world title he's 18 to 4 I feel good I feel let's let's go to practice let's train let's that's the reason why you do this is to is to be the world champion fighting guys two and one one and one are not gonna get me get me there the way that I want to get there I want, I want to earn it I want to fight the best guys in the world and that's the way. That's why I do things that most people are like. Oh, why does he take those risks and stuff like that? Because I'm confident in my abilities. I know what I'm capable of doing. I surround myself with the best team. And when you do that, the the risk is really not that. It's not really a risk. So that's why. That's why I do. I do the things I do. I've never done things the normal way, and I, for the rest of my life, I'll never do things normal. You did uh, your training camp uh, down in Orange County with with uh, Cup Swanson, T.J. Dillish, all those guys at Training Lab. No, 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 no. at uh, Body Shop. Body Shop. I do my I do my strength and conditioning with and my nutrition with Sam Calavita, and they're a part of it as well in, in his garage. So, uh, but I did my my uh, MMA camp with Antonio, AJ, and Joey, all those guys back back in Long Beach. That's like an up and coming camp down there with Antonio McKee, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, one thing about Antonio is a really, really good, great, great coach. I keep saying it over and over again, but. But uh, he really is. He uh, spends a lot of time with me. We spend hours and hours just studying and and, and working on combinations, groundwork, just just you name it. Anytime you want to train, he's available, and uh, that's why his guys are winning because he spends the time with them. He cares about about us going out there and performing. He, he feels the same amount of pressure as we do uh, that we put on ourselves. He puts on him, and that's why he's there at practice, putting the hours with us, and results. The results speak for themselves. We've seen almost exclusively just your striking so far in Bellator. You have a series of knockout victories. Are we going to see your, your, your wrestling at some point soon? Yeah, I'm ready to use my wrestling and grappling, honestly. I really am. I mean, I'm not, I, I roll with really good guys that, that are black belts that, that can throw up submissions and things like that. I'm prepared, but I haven't had to. I mean, I hit you with one punch, and I, I'm deadly in both of my punches. If I hit you once in the body, the head, temple, anywhere I hit you, you will go down. My kicks are, are coming along. Just my whole my whole uh, game plan has just been pr uh, improving as a fighter, and that's what I've been doing. I haven't had to go to the ground. Anytime you get you get a knockout on your feet, 
people tune in. So, so if I don't have to go to the ground, I'd rather stay on my feet. So win over ego, he, he's obviously, like you said, a guy that's fought for a title. Does this vault you now into almost that title conversation if you were to get this win on Saturday? I believe so, yeah. It's definitely not going to hurt it. So, uh, yeah, but get this win on Saturday night, go from there. If it's fighting an, an, another contender at 145, I will. Just, I just want to keep the ball rolling, get to the top. That's, that's what I do. I don't want to fight guys that are, that are you know, losing records. I want to fight the top the top guys, tough guys, and uh, get to where I ultimately want to be, and that's to be champ of the world. One year from now, let's say September 2019, where do you see yourself? That's a good question. I, I see my, I feel uh, if I keep doing what I'm doing, I'll be definitely be a world champion or be close to it. So uh, I just live day by day. Whatever they, whatever they put in front of me, okay, you're going to fight Leandrigo, okay, you're going to fight so-and-so, okay. It's ultimately up to Bellator of when I, when I, when they feel I'm, I can be, you know, fight for the for the title and I just have to keep proving myself time and time again but uh, like I say that's why that's why we wake up in the morning and train like we do is, is to put us one step closer to being being a world champion. Happy birthday by the way this week was your birthday 20, 22 right? Yeah. Oh, yeah 22 it was on September 23rd so everybody always says like September 26th I think Wikipedia has September 26th something like that no it's September 23rd. <laughs> and none of this is, is too soon for you at 22 years old? No I, I don't Come, come live a day in life with me. Come see what I do every single day, and, and you'll know why I'm always ready. Uh, the, the, one, the one blemish on your record so far is, is your pro debut against, against Zach Freeman. Is that a fight that you would like to avenge at some point? We'll see. We all, I mean, I think most of the people know wh wh where he's at and where I'm at. I'm definitely, he's definitely not on the same level as me. Um, but he's a, he's, he's a nice guy. He's, I don't know. There's not much I can really say. He beat me, and uh, but yeah, if the opportunity ever came to, to fight him again, absolutely I would. I'm at 145, but let's meet at 150. But I'm I'm looking. I mean, what am I going to gain by fighting him again? I'm trying to be a world champion. I mean, he, he had his he had his his fame and his glory. He's going to tell his kids that he beat Aaron Pico 30 years from now. That's okay. I'm okay with that. Comfortable in my own skin. I know what I'm capable of doing, and, and he knows too. If we were to fight again. That, that would not happen, but it is what it is. He, he, he got me, and uh, move on. Aside from being a world champion, I know that's one of your goals, but you also want to be one of the faces of Bellator, do you not? Do you want you want to be one of the guys that they, that you see on the, on the posters? 100%, yeah. I, I feel I'm capable of doing that, getting to the organization, uh, growing the organization. I want to grow as a fighter, and I want to grow with Bellator, and... and uh, be the best that I can be, and they can be the best that they can be. And uh, you just see that, you know, with the zone and, and merging together and, and capturing other other audiences in the UK and Europe, and uh, it's just go just good for both parties. It's good for us fighters, and it's good for the organization. So, for sure, I want to be I want to be uh, on the posters and be be a face of Bellator. Um, who doesn't? There's a ton of, uh, and just last thing for you, there's a ton of money coming into the boxing game right now with all the new streaming services, all the new broadcast options. Um, you've, you've done boxing, you've done wrestling. Is MMA the focus, or do you see yourself maybe in the future doing one of the, or both of those two things as well? No, I, it's no secret. I, I want to do both. I, that's why I'm, I'm capable of doing both. I, I spar with the best boxers in the world, and I know where my skills are at. I, I, I have to... I'm in a wild card with Freddie working on my boxing and sparring the best guys, and I'm, I'm trying to juggle M I'm doing MMA is my priority, but I go to the boxing club, just like go out there and spar, and I'm right there. I haven't even just solely focused on boxing, but if I ever got that opportunity, I would best believe I'd be, be ready, and I I'm, feel I'm capable of doing it, and, and will do that. So, you see, like you said, you see the, 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 the money that's being poured into it, and you see a lot of organizations backing boxing and MMA. So. The most important thing is just when you get that phone call and, and the opportunity comes, make sure you're prepared. And that's why I'm constantly in the gym, working in boxing, MMA, as an overall fighter. It's a short window of opportunity for me. So I do that every day to be the best fighter. So, yeah, to answer your question, I want to do both.